This phone is the bomb. All joking aside, the Note 7 really is actually a really awesome device. There's a lot of cool stuff about it. There's a lot of stuff that's familiar. So I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that's not so familiar, maybe some of the changes that we see in the Note 7 this year. I will mention some comparisons with the S7 Edge and also the Note 5. There's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and dive on down and take a look at the phone. I briefly want to talk about the battery issue and it is going to affect my review because normally with this kind of review I do like to put in a lot of effort to the video like giving you nice panoramic shots, the cinematographic style, get those really beautiful shots in there for the review. This is actually like the first phone that I felt uncomfortable having so I really <laughs> I need to get this thing turned in and I want to give you my experience that I've had with the Note 7 up until this point. Perhaps when the new stock arrives I'll be able to give some more insight about it but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to cover all the bases if you are interested in getting this device after this whole recall situation is handled. First of all, the Note series is one of the phone lines that I really look forward to getting every year. Ever since the Note 3, it's been my personal favorite daily driver. It's the phone I go back to every year after using all the other phones that I use throughout the year. I like the bigger screen, the camera's always good, the audio quality is good. I end up using the S Pen here and there. And one of my favorite features that was added last year is Samsung Pay. I love using Samsung Pay when I can. It's priceless to see the cashier's reactions when they think that it's not gonna work. And you just kind of look up at them and smirk and it works. So it's great. I always have it loaded up right here on the bottom. I can just flip it up, use it and then get going. And not to mention, like when you use Samsung Pay, you get some really cool perks. Like I got a $20 gift card here. After I use it three times, I got a $5 gift card to Dunkin' Donuts. Before I get into what's different or what's new about the Note 7, I wanna talk about some of its strengths and where it stands out. The Note 7 definitely does look like a good mix between the Note 5 and the S7 Edge. The reason why I say that is because it's got a curved edge on both sides. And you do get some of those edge features that we saw with the S7 Edge. Now personally, I haven't really used too much of the edge features, but I do like that they're there. It's a nice option to have. I just kind of have it floating off to the side, but I rarely ever use it. So it wouldn't hurt my feelings if it wasn't there, but it doesn't hurt my feelings that it is there. With that said, TouchWiz is so much better than it was a couple years ago. One, you might have noticed that my phone might look a little different than yours, and that's because I have it themed out. It's got a stock Android 7.0 theme on it. To me, TouchWiz in the past, it was mostly the UI and the looks of the device that I didn't care about. Now I fix that with this theme on top of using Nova Launcher to where I can add custom icons and just really make my device look the way I want it to look. In case you're wondering what icon pack I'm using, it is fixed. It's been the one that I've been using for the longest time now, but I can't seem to go to anything else at the moment. It's no surprise that the camera is great. It was great on the S7 Edge and it's pretty much the same exact thing that what we saw on that phone. You can double tap the home button like normal to launch the camera quickly and it launches relatively fast. It's not the quickest in the world, but it still launches pretty good. I'll get into some of the camera changes in just a minute, but the quality is great. Like I have no complaints about the quality of the Note 7 camera. Other points about the camera that I appreciate that have carried over is the OIS. The OIS is smooth. It's actually a feature that I really do appreciate about this phone. You've got pretty much all the same features, got your pro, panorama, selective focus, slow motion, all that good stuff still installed. One of my favorite things about the Samsung camera app is that it comes with YouTube Live embedded into the camera. Now supposedly YouTube is going to allow that to be happening on all devices and I can't wait for that to happen because this is actually something I really want out of a phone experience as a tech reviewer. There's been a few times where I've used that function to throw some live video feeds for some videos I've put up on the channel and it's just a great option to have. I've actually been seeing Root Junkie use it himself. It's just really cool to have that feature. The Samsung camera is so good that I actually trust it to use as my main camera for some videos that I produce. It's got great audio quality and great video. As normal, the screen is a great looking screen. It looks the best, like Samsung just puts out really good looking screens. I also like the form factor this year. It's a little different. It's not like this flat front and then you got this curved edges like on the Note 5. And it's a little different than the S7 Edge. The curves are actually symmetrical. The curves are actually symmetrical. The curves match on each side. So it really feels good in the hand. If you like the phone, like without a case or anything like that, it definitely feels nice and ergonomic. And ironically, even though as big as this phone is, it's like the best phablet one-handed device that you can get. Now I do have large hands, but I'm also able to navigate the entire phone 
a lot easier than I have in the past with other big devices. All right, so those are pretty much the areas that we're somewhat familiar with, but now I wanna kind of focus on what's new about the Note 7. The Note 7 now has an iris scanner, and it's actually quite useful for certain situations. Now, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be useful to where you can use your fingerprint sensor and unlock it a lot quicker, but let's say that you have gloves on, that you can't use your finger for some odd reason, but you can still flip up on the screen, you're gonna be able to use the iris scanner. I really see this iris scanner being useful in winter time or just times where you gotta use gloves or your hands are dirty or something like that. It's a really cool feature and I'm glad that they added it this year. We finally have USB Type-C on the Note 7. We were kind of wondering if the S7 Edge was gonna have USB Type-C or not, but basically they kept the micro USB connection on the S7 Edge and the S7 because of the VR headset. But now we have a USB Type-C compatible VR headset and they're good to go for future devices. I mentioned the edge panel before, but it is a nice addition that I do like. If you're just, I guess, bored one day and you wanna check out stuff and flip through different little shortcuts, I got all my favorite teams up here. I got the Boston Celtics and the Pittsburgh Steelers. If I wanna follow the scores, I can do so. You also got my places, calendar, weather, I mean, you got all kinds of stuff. I like having the shortcut to the people's edge. I can just quickly go to the contact itself instead of going through my phone app or contacts app. It just kind of makes it easier to get to. And you can add pretty much any app that you want. It becomes like a launcher in a sense. If you want to edit your edge panels, you just go to settings here. You can check on what you want. And like, I don't want the Yahoo Finance. I don't want Yahoo News, CNN. I don't want a lot of edge panels, but there are some good ones to choose from. And if you don't want the ones that they have already loaded, you can go over here to their basically like their app store and you can download other apps. Some of them will be free and some will be paid. And just from looking at this last time I checked on, it seems like they added a lot more. So they're adding more as we speak. So it's really neat that they got some more. That's, I mean, a lot of this is a surprise to me. There was not nearly as much as this a couple weeks ago. You can also reorder it. So if you wanted, let's say your sports scores first or your weather first, whatever you're gonna check first, you can just arrange it to go over here. You just kind of hold it down, select it and move it around. Part of the edge panel is this new thing called on circle. It's basically gonna pull up anybody that you know that has a Note 7 device. And this is where it becomes really cool. You actually get some text message previews and stuff from other contacts that don't have a Note 7, but the most experience that you're gonna get from it is if someone does have that Note 7 or the on circle option. So I got my friend TK right here and I can write him a little note. You just send that and I'm just gonna tell him, hey, once you get done with your message, you just hit send and it's like a text message, a written note, it's pretty cool. Other options you have is voice call, text message, you got your camera, that's the note that I just did, and then you got some like emojis or stickers. So it's a pretty cool little thing here, like it's a fun interactive kind of option that you can use. As I mentioned before, the UI has changed a bit, it's a lot toned down to what it used to be like, and I have that stock Android kind of theme on it. The other UI changes is that this used to slide up here at the top, like you used to have more shortcuts that you could get to, and you would just slide over to get to them, but now it's just one straight up and down kind of action. So you can basically swipe down and see your shortcuts and also your notifications, but if you wanna see more shortcuts, you gotta swipe down again to get to the rest of them. Now you do have the option to use two fingers and pull down and you get the whole thing. But if you're using it one-handed, you're gonna to have to use two swipes to get down to all the shortcuts. This is a change that I actually don't really care for. I liked it when it was more one-handed friendly for this aspect to be able to swipe down and then just go on over and swipe over. I just kind of got used to that, but it's not like a deal breaker or anything like that. Another change about this is the brightness slider. You have to swipe down twice to get to it, while before you would swipe down once and it would already be there. And the brightness is one of those controls that I kind of use frequently throughout the day depending on my lighting situation. Now we can't talk about the Note 7 without getting into the S Pen features. The S Pen clicks out just like it did last year, and this year, supposedly, you can't put it in backwards. I will only go so far to do this, and that's as far as I'm going to go. But they have blocked it so that we can't put it in backwards, and we know that whole story, the S Pen gate. Last year's issue was the S Pen, now it's the exploding battery. But we do have some more features this time, but they are going to be kind of familiar as well. You got Create a Note, Smart Select, Screen Write, Translate, Glance, and Magnify. Create a Note is just a simple note-taking app or option you can start to write on inside of here and just kind of do what you need to do. You also have a little button here on the side of the S Pen, so if you want to bring up the shortcuts to a different spot, or if you don't feel like reaching over to wherever that little shortcut minimizer is, you can do that. Smart Select is pretty cool. Kind of select a certain area, and then you can auto-select, you can do all kinds of stuff. 
you can actually create a GIF with it. And you got lasso, oval, and animation. So we're gonna do the animation thing real quick. All you gotta do is click your pen and get your smart select, animation, and then drag over to where you need it to be placed. And it's really simple. And you can choose your quality to high quality or standard. And all you gotta do is hit record. You get up to 15 seconds, so it can do it up to that point. So I'm just gonna stop it at this point. And now you can see just that clip in area. It's a really cool option to have, and there's a lot of possibilities that you can do with this. You can use it for social media, but you can also use it for other situations, like if you're a video editor and you need to tell your teammate to edit a certain clip, you can just clip out that one part and send it to them. Hey, you know, redo that part. Just use your imagination what you can use this for. I probably use ScreenWrite the most, and it's probably my favorite feature out of this because it is the one I use the most. So you click it, you get your screen right, it takes a screenshot, and you can write on the screen. And what's really nice about that, let's say I have one of my writers, I need to point out a spot to where it needs to be edited. All I gotta do is just you know underline it and then tell them to like delete that part or rephrase it or just refer to this section that I highlighted. It's a really awesome option. And like I said, it's the one that I use the most. Other S Pen features you have are translate and glance and magnify. Translate, you highlight a word that's in a different language or if you're using your own language but you need to translate it to something else or see the meaning in another language, you can do that. Glance is a really neat feature. It's one of those features that adds to the multitasking. So we'll go ahead and activate that real quick. So it makes it this really small screen over here, but what you do, you hover over with your S Pen and it brings it back. So if you're just referring to a certain web page or if you're texting or something like that, but you need to you know, look over on another page, you can do that by just hovering over it and bring it back and it minimizes right back in its place once you're done hovering. The last option we'll go over is magnify. And basically what that does is exactly how it sounds. It magnifies a certain area or text. So you just hover over, you don't actually touch the screen and you can see it in bigger font. Now this is good for reading, but it's also good for just hunting out those details that you're needing. Let's say if you're working on an art piece or if you're working on an image, you can highlight it, you can magnify it to where you can see it better. Let's go into the camera real quick. I know we already talked about some of it, but some of the changes I do want to mention is that you got different ways to access things basically. But to access your modes this time, you're going to swipe over from the left hand side and that's how you're going to get your auto pro and all that kind of stuff. And now you have filters that you could choose from when swiping over from the right, which is great for social media. That's the major change that's within the camera app. There's not much else that's different from what we've seen before. A change that I do want to see is to move the toggle button that you switch between your front and rear facing camera is put it over here by the shutter. Make it easier for one handed use because with using a big device like this, you got to use two hands to get over to the front facing camera if you want to use that one or if you're on the front facing camera, you got to use your second hand to get to that point. It'd be really great to have it right here to where I could just touch it with one hand. Another awesome thing about this phone is that it's now water resistant, just like the S7 or S7 Edge. It's a great feature. You can get this thing totally submerged. You can actually use the S Pen while it's dunked underneath water. It's a really cool function. Like, I don't know if I'll ever need to use this in a pool or at the beach under the water. Like personally, even though that this is water resistant, I'm not gonna encourage putting it in water for an extended amount of time. It's just electronics and water don't mix well, so there's no point in doing it unless if you just absolutely have to, or if you drop it in the toilet, you know that, well, one, you're gonna have to clean it off, but it's not gonna get damaged because of water. Much like the S7 and S7 Edge, they brought back the SD card. You just access it here with your SIM card tray and you can add up to 258 gigs to which you actually could have gotten a deal on that if you're pre-ordered and that's the deal that I snagged up rather than the watch. It's really cool to have that much storage and so that leads me to my next point is that this now has 64 gigs of internal storage. That's the standard, that's where it's starting out at. You actually can't get anything bigger as far as internal storage goes but I love that they brought back the SD card. I very much appreciate having the SD card back. Even though I opened up this video joking about this phone being the bomb, it's not really a laughing matter when someone gets hurt, that's for sure. But this phone, apart from that issue, is a really great phone. Other issues that I've had with the phone, even though I keep this thing in a case, I don't think it's been out of case, but maybe like one or 2% of the time, and I still manage to get a small, very minute scratch on the back. I'm like, how does that happen? Like I take care of my devices. As a matter of fact, like the pre-installed screen protector that this phone came with, I haven't removed it because one, it's a curved screen. I'm not gonna be able to get like the kind of tempered glass screen protector that I prefer to get. 
But I was like, well, as long as the screen protector is on there, it's not gonna get scratched up. So I just left it as is. It's still a major bummer that I got a scratch on there when I try to keep my phones in mint, pristine condition at all times. The other big thing is that I didn't really realize how bad of a lag that this phone had when doing certain kind of tasks. I'll leave a link down below of a video that Droid Modern X put together that allowed me to be part of. And it was basically a head-on-head -head battle between the Exynos and the Snapdragon Note 7s. And the Exynos kicked the Snapdragon's butt. With that said though, the iPhone that he tested alongside of the Note 7 that he has got completely demolished by the iPhone. So it kind of opened up my eyes a little bit more that this phone's not as speedy as maybe other ones, but at the same time, I'm not opening up apps like that in real world. We we're basically putting it through a stress test. But it still opened my eyes that like, man, when it does lag, I feel like it, it it freaking dragged. But overall experience has not really been that laggy. There's just a few hiccups here and there. Not enough to get on my nerves. A few other notes about the Note 7 is that I'm glad I got the black version. I really like the stealthy look that it has. I'm still tempted when the Note 7 comes back out, when all these issues are fixed with the battery, is to try out the blue coral. It really looks nice and I want to try it out. I got some cases that have that actual color kind of scheme and it looks so good. I actually collected quite a few more opinions about the color of the Note 7. I'll leave that link down below in the description. A bunch of other YouTubers chimed in. Man, this is one of those devices that I could just talk about for hours because there's so much involved. I know that I didn't cover everything about the Note 7. I mainly want to focus on some of the highlights, some of the strong points, some of the pitfalls as well, but mainly talk about the stuff that's new about the Note 7 because there's actually quite a bit that was new. When I was planning out this review, I was really kind of torn what direction I wanted to go in. Didn't want to give a whole stinking overview about the device and that thing. I mean, shoot, like I can make a whole hour long video about the Note 7 review. It would be a lot of repetitive kind of stuff because it is very similar to the S7 Edge. And if you were to ask me if this was a worthy upgrade from the S7 Edge to the Note 7, other than the battery issue, is that I would say yes it is, especially for like the bigger screens. I do like the form factor on the Note 7 a bit more than the S7 Edge mainly because it feels better in the hand, and it's because it's more of a subtle edge. It's not like this really big rounded curve like the S7 Edge has. So it feels like you still have a full device, a full screen, but you still have those edge features involved. You also start out with 64 gigs of internal storage. That's a really big upgrade in my opinion. You could almost get away without actually using an SD card if you didn't want to. As a matter of fact, we had a 32 gig model of the Note 5 last year, and I got fine. I had to manage my content a little bit more, but with 64 gigs, you're gonna get by pretty well. And if you run out of space, you can pick up an SD card for a really good price. As I said, I could go on and on about the Note 7. If you have any more questions or if there's anything else you wanna know about the Note 7, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer that to the best of my abilities. Or you can go over on Twitter. You can tweet me at Baintech or whatever social media network that you like to use. Wish me luck with this whole recall situation. I'm gonna to try to turn this thing in as soon as I can. I'm gonna finish up a couple more clips with this Note 7, a couple case reviews and then I'm turning this thing in and I'm not really sure what phone I'm gonna use after that point. I know the new Nexus or the new Pixel phone is fixed to come out. I'm definitely gonna be picking that up when it comes out. Hopefully HTC doesn't screw that one up. As always, with these longer videos, I like to ask you guys to leave a comment down below, which is Cowabunga Dude, if you watched the whole entire video. I love it when you guys make that comment because it shows me that you watched the whole video and I so definitely appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already so you can see more videos like this. I got tons more content coming out really soon. And hit me up in the social networks. Follow me over there. And until then, stay techie.